Welcome and well met. It is the Quonset Manager with a bit more of trivia for the discerning survivor. I'm noticing that I'm seeing an increasing number of frozen corpses due to poor clothing choices, so I'm here to help with the very latest in survivor fashion. Let us start with the clothing stats and what they mean. The warmth bonus provided by clothing provides protection from the ambient temperatures experienced by the player. All clothing worn by the player contributes to the warmth bonus experienced by the player. In the end, this number is life or death. The windproof bonus provided by clothing provides protection from the additional temperature loss experienced by the player as a result of wind chill. Now here is the clothing screen in the outermost slots. These slots are the ones that can improve your armor and windproof score, as well as the first to be damaged by attacks and environmental damage. Yes, the head slot is backwards for some reason. It is what it is. The waterproof bonus provided by clothing measures how quickly clothing becomes wet during outdoor activities. Clothes gradually become wet if it is snowing or when the player walks on ice. Clothing also becomes completely wet if the player falls through weak ice. If clothing becomes fully soaked, then the clothing will start to freeze if ambient temperatures are below freezing. Clothes will gradually dry off when worn in warm interior locations, or when worn or placed near a fire. If you want them to dry out quickly, you take them off and place them next to the fire. It dries off quicker that way. As clothes become wet and frozen, their warmth and wind chill protection bonuses reduce and they become heavier. Wearing wet or frozen clothing also increases the likelihood of hypothermia and can ultimately lead to frostbite. So if you're wearing clothing that's completely wet or frozen, you might as well take it off because frankly, it's not doing you any good and actually making things worse. While it's important to understand this, it is also mostly irrelevant as far as your clothing choices go. For most survivors, waterproofing should be all but ignored as far as selecting which clothes to wear. Just don't get wet. The protection bonus provided by clothing provides a reduction in physical damage to the player, such as through falls, burns, or attacks by wildlife. In easier settings, this doesn't matter as much. In Interloper, I find it to be the matter of life and death. The protection that you have can mean the difference between a bear, if you're lucky, leaving you a 10%, or you having enough to survive long enough to actually put on a bandage. And finally, the mobility penalty provided by clothing reduces the length of time that a player can sprint. The penalty is additive when wearing multiple pieces of clothing that can cause mobility penalty. It's important to note that if your sprint ever falls below 50% and you start sprinting, you'll begin to breathe heavy and never stop. Until you pass through a transition to a new map, enter a building, you will just continue to breathe heavily. It'll become very annoying after a while. You will need to remove clothing until your stamina can recover to over 50% for it to stop. Then you're free to put the clothing back on. But the next time you sprint, the process will begin anew. So, while there's no real penalty to reducing your sprint down to, say, 20%, it can get rather grating if you need to sprint it all with it down that low. Now then, let's move on to various clothing types. Headgear. In the game, there are no craftable hats. This is a game balance issue. You might survive for 10,000 days, but sooner or later you'll run out of cloth. Your hat will reach 0% and sooner or later frostbite will kill you. Until then, let's look at the available headgear. There are really only two true choices. The Bavaklava and the Wool Toque. The Bavaklava can only be worn on the inside, so if you wear a Wool Toque over it, you lose 0.5 wind resistance and 1% armor. Honestly, you can wear two Wool Tukes and there really isn't a difference temperature-wise. The main advantage with the Bavaklava is that if you lose the Wool Toque to, say, a wolf attack, you have slightly better wind resistance and armor as a backup. On one other comment, Talking with one player who says he goes for those thousand day runs, he claims to only wear the Bavaklava. In his opinion, the wool toque is a waste of cloth to maintain in a long run. As a matter of strategy, if you are going for that thousand day run in Interloper where cloth gets used up very quickly, you might want to, you know, prioritize which clothing items you're going to maintain, and in which case, the Bavaklava is clearly the headgear of choice. Handslot. There are three gloves to watch for, gauntlets, rabbit mitts, and wool mittens, each with their own perks. 
The wool mittens are 0.1 kilograms of weight for one degree of feels like temp. This makes it the best weight to temp ratio in the game. I keep a pair as my backup as well as for when I need to haul gear. It's light and repairable with cloth, a very common material in the game. Next are the gauntlets. A better choice than the rabbit mitts, in my opinion. It has a lower sprint cost and plus one armor over the rabbit mitts. So why the rabbit mitts on this list at all? Because gauntlets can only be repaired with leather, and leather is hard to come by. I'll talk about resource management in another video. You may find it hard to come by leather, and if so, well, you need to choose what items you're going to be maintaining. In my opinion, the gauntlet's right up there with the insulated boots, but we'll talk about those later. In the meantime, rabbit mitts can be crafted and are easy to repair. So if you're going for the long game, the rabbit mitts may be the handwear for you simply because it doesn't need cloth at all and rabbits are a renewable resource. Shirts. Wear whatever has the most temperature. If you're doing it right, the armor and wind resistance is moot because it'll be under your coats. And they all have good weight to temperature ratios. However, there are two that stand out. The Fisherman's is the best overall. Get two and keep a third just in case. If you look out on a run, there is the incredibly rare Kawak Chan sweater. It has plus 0.5 over the Fisherman's for double the weight. I'd still wear it if I found one. I consider it worth the cost, but I also don't go out of my way to find it. And it's almost never heard of to find two in the game, so don't even worry about what you would do if you had two. Coats. We have many important coats, each one with its own reason for keeping one around. I'm going to start off with the simple parka and ski jacket. The ski jacket is slightly better, but both suck. I'm mentioning them because if you play Interloper, they are the third and second best you can find, the best being the Mackinac. Another coat of note is the Windbreaker. Plus three wind resistance for plus five weight makes it an excellent choice for when you want to minimize weight while sacrificing as little warmth as possible. You might be saying you're sacrificing a lot of the base warmth and you're only picking up wind resistance, but I assure you when you're walking around, nine times out of ten, you'll use that plus three wind resistance. Which of course brings us to the best overall coat, the Expedition Parka. For warmth for 1.5 weight, a real deal even without the best wind resistance available. The only downside is the lack of armor. If you want that, we're moving on to crafted coats. We'll start with the Moose Cloak, because if you're playing Interloper, you're going to make one at some point. Its weight is huge, its warmth sucks. That plus 25 armor is nothing to sneeze at. Also, if you harvest the Rune Cloak, you are left with one Moose Hide. How many Moose Hides does it take to make a new Moose Cloak? One. So if you run out of arrows and bullets, killing a wolf is only possible in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you're never going to kill a bear again. That makes repairing such items very difficult. But the moose cloak can remain in your inventory indefinitely if you have a supply of fishing lines and guts. On the other hand, we have the bearskin coat. It is, in my opinion, the Cadillac of coats. Plus six warmth, plus five wind, Armor 18 and a percentage chance to scare off wolves, it is truly an amazing coat that you pay for with massive weight and a minus 20 to your sprint. Unfortunately, that's the price you pay for the best stats in a coat. And that, of course, brings us to the wolf coat. 4 4 and 15% of armor with a chance to scare off wolves, it's worth it to make this coat or the bear coat. I don't usually make both unless I'm an interloper and all my other coats have fallen apart. The wolf court is, however, much easier to repair because frankly, wolf skins are fairly easy to come by. Wolves are constantly coming at you, whereas bears, they might be hard to locate sometimes. So in comparison to requiring a wolf pelt versus a bear pelt to repair, you might want to stick with wolves just to be economical. Next, we move on to underwear. Frankly, it's wool long johns or go home. Yes, plus two degrees for 0.5 weight is a good deal, but the normal long johns are hardly worth the cloth to repair. Until you find red long johns, keep the blue ones, but I don't bother to repair them if they slowly rot away. I, in fact, will let them go down to 0% and harvest them because I don't consider them worth the weight. Socks. It's climbing socks or nothing. 
Put wool or sport socks on, but don't bother to repair them. Climbing socks are barely worth the cloth to repair as is, but in my opinion, it is worth keeping. Yes, you probably want to wait a long time to repair them. Usually I'll wait until they drop below 60% before I do it, but I'll keep climbing socks. In Interloper, I might maintain the wool socks because that's the best sock you can find in Interloper usually. I've heard rumors there might be a pair of climbing socks in Hidden River Valley. I haven't seen it myself, however. But that all said, very quickly in Interloper, I decide that the socks are not worth the time and effort. In fact, if I need emergency cloth, they're the first things I tear up. Pants! We have three pants that are worth your time. Combat pants are great at plus 2 degrees for 0.75 weight. If you're trying to run light, keep a pair to wear under something else that has a better wind resistance and or armor. Speaking of, we have the snow pants, which are at 2.5 and plus 2 wind resistance. I usually put those on the outside over the combat pants. Now, I will say this, two pairs of snow pants are a good choice, but I prefer the deer pants for my outer pair. The extra 1 kilogram of weight and negative 5 to my sprint is worth the plus 5% armor for me, as well as keeping my cloth repair costs to a minimum. Deer pants are far easier to find repair material for than snow pants when you get into the later stages of a game. Next we have accessories. The ear wraps are plus 1 degree for 0.25 weight, but they drop in quality very easily. The plus 1 to armor redeems this cloth sink, in my opinion. The other item, of course, is the moose satchel. Frankly, it is without peer and, in my opinion, the most essential clothing item you will ever have. The plus 5 kilograms maximum carry capacity cannot be beat. And I'd like to mention a little known fact about the moose satchel. If you craft a moose satchel, then harvest it, you gain one leather. Besides beachcombing, this is the only renewable source of leather in the game. Yes, you have to sacrifice an entire moose hide for one leather, but let me assure you, you get into the later stages of a game, sometimes it's worth killing an entire moose, skinning it, making a satchel out of it, and then harvesting it just to be able to repair a leather item. Unfortunately, when you get up into those 500 day runs, you might not have another choice. And last but not least, we come to the boots. Combat boots are lousy, but rather common in Interloper. Relatively speaking, of course. So while the sprint might suck, that 10 armor is nothing to sneeze at. Keep this or the ski boots around for wolf struggles. Speaking of, ski boots are amazing. Best warmth, best armor, and this is combined with the speed of a comatose sloth. Negative 20 to sprint, and 4 kilograms of weight make this a pair of boots you keep around for walking around outside your base. It's not something that you really want to use for long distance travel. Combine this and a bare coat for a whopping 30 armor with a negative 40 to sprint, yet plus 9 plus 9 warmth. You'll never sprint again, but you'll also be able to rustle with Scruffy like a pro. To follow this up, we have the Muckluck slightly less warm than the insulated boots for the same weight, but a 9 point difference in sprint speed. Personally, sprint is overrated, so I go with the insulated boots usually. If sprint and weight is important, I downgrade all the way to running shoes sometimes. But, you know, as a matter of course, I just stick with the insulated boots. Maybe I'll switch with the mucklucks if I find them, which isn't very often. It is unfortunately a rather rare item to come across. Now, as I was saying before, if I need emergency cloth, my socks are the first to go. So I do need something on my feet, that's why I keep around one pair of running shoes, if I've got the leather to spare. 0.5 weight, no sprint penalty, they suck. They suck hard. But if I'm hauling goods, I need the lightest gear that I can wear with the best speed. Frankly, that's running shoes. It kind of depends. I'll let them rot away fairly quickly in the game, but I will maintain pair around and I won't worry about repairing them because frankly speaking, the values suck. Still, in the early game I do a lot of hauling, so I find the uh, running shoes are worth it at least for the first 50 days or so. Now then, uh, that brings us to the strategy section. 
I usually keep a full configuration on me, then I have a few backups for various purposes. Ideally, I have at least one bavaclava, two wool toques, gauntlets, rabbit mitts, wool mittens, one cowchan, two fishermen, one bear, two expedition, one windbreaker, one wolf coat, one moose cloak, three wool long johns, one combat pants, one snow pants, one deerskin, three climbing socks, one muckluck, one deerskin boots, one ski boots, one insulated boots, two ear wraps, and one moose cloak. That would be my ideal configuration of clothing that I would have both on me and that I would maintain at my base so that I could switch out. Depending on your play style and where you base, you may not have a lot of cloth to deal with, so you might want to pare down your clothing fairly quickly depending on what difficulty setting you're on. I use several different configurations. First of all is, of course, naked. However, I usually augment this with at least rabbit mittens, deerskin boots, and a moose cloak. Why? Because those are the easiest to repair, and they give me the maximum amount of warmth benefit for minimum long-term maintenance cost. It also gives me a fairly high level of armor, although if I think it's safe, I'll ditch the cloak because it's so damn heavy. Of course, this relies on the fact that around negative 30 degrees, the damage you take is the same fully clothed or naked. And indoors, these items will be just enough to keep you from slowly freezing to death in most locations. If I'm wearing a full set of clothes, in an ideal world, there are some clothes I just always wear. The bavaclava and wool toque, one fisherman sweater and a kawachan sweater, or two fishermen, two wool long johns, combat pants, which I would wear underneath whatever else I'm wearing, two climbing socks, one moose satchel, and one ear wrap. Everything else is kind of variable depending on what I'm trying to achieve. I'll switch out everything else depending on if I want to keep warmth up, or if I want to keep my weight down, or if I want to maximize my armor for fighting wolves. If I'm going light, I will add wool mittens, windbreaker, an expedition parka, snow pants, and insulated boots. If I'm going for warmth, I'll use a bearskin coat on the inside, expedition parka on the outside, gauntlets, snow pants, and ski boots. And if I'm going for armor, take off the wool toque because you actually gain a point of armor exposing the bavaclava, moose cloak on the outside, bearskin on the inside, deerskin pants, gauntlets, and ski boots. Of course, mix and match based on your needs and the available clothing. No, this is an ideal example that I'm giving you. That almost never actually happens. I usually have to make do with two fisherman sweaters, and I, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I actually found a cow chain. I frequently walk around for maximum warmth, but substitute mucklucks for ski boots because the sprint penalty on ski boots is harsh. And sometimes, well, I just want to run around a bit and, you know, even though I prefer the insulated boots for temperature, that 12 sprint penalty is kind of harsh. In general, these are just overall strategies for you. Your specific situation, you're going to have to make decisions constantly on the fly as you run around. And I hope overall this gives you some overall strategies that you can use for trying to survive in the long dark. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Turfs Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.